Today we are with Max and his 2008 Viper ACR. We're going to talk about what it's like to own a Dodge Viper ACR, a Gen 4 Viper. It's pretty awesome. I drove it yesterday, and I got pretty hooked on it. <laughs> Man, the, the story of the Viper for me dates back to 2004 or 2005. I was I grew up in Boston, and I was out in Provincetown on Cape Cod, the tip of Cape Cod, with my cousin Evan, who does shoe design for Reebok. Shout out to Evan. And Provincetown is a quaint little town with shops and a main strip. We came out of an Army Navy store, okay, and we saw a Gen 3 Viper in the launch spec, oh. blue with the white stripes. Yes. We both watched it go by. Everybody on the block turned their heads. We both looked at each other and we said, "Man, we got to have a Viper at some point." And and it began. And it began the pursuit, the pursuit for the Viper. So, been lucky enough to to be able to own this one for a few years and certainly has has not disappointed in any way shape or form i love the low rpm burbles and you can hear it right next to you because of the side exhaust absolutely absolutely it doesn't take much this car has just got after cat dumps okay. after cat straight pipes our other good friend oil brothers yep. shout out to maddie b in chicago fitted the fitted the straight pipes on this thing after cats and that's all it takes is you know a little bit of you know a little bit of throttle input and you get some some factory burbles so sounds so good yes, sounds so good so fun fact actually my z06 and this viper shared a transport truck coming out west last year I, right. it got delivered in california was being unloaded and i look at the front and i see this black and red gen 4 acr on illinois plates i'm like that's Max's car. <laughs> yep, got a got a photo from got a photo from Eddie, and and my car was in my car was in the trailer with his car. Yes. with one of my motorcycles. Oh yeah, and then funny enough, one of my one of my other good buddies, Paul Pachowski, who I went to high school with in Chicago, had sent me a photo of the Viper in the truck too. He had something in there. He had bought an E46 M3, oh, my a red one, I believe. I think it was a Mola red. Okay, and he was getting it sent out to him. If you recall, it was January 23 yes. with some really inclement weather. Oh my God, it was and pouring rain. I think we found the only truck that was running routes from the Midwest to the West Coast. Yes. So, what has it been like owning this thing? What have you been doing with it? Because it's gotten some pretty aggressive tires, which I found out yesterday when it rained. It's that's an right. That's H. right. That's right. We didn't we didn't prepare Eddie too well for the. For hey, the I survived. The car survived. It was that's right. I'll do like twenty five miles an hour. The not hydroplane. Yeah, man. My my story with this car is is a fun one. I bought the car in Q three Q three twenty nineteen. Okay. With about eight thousand miles on it. Oh and wow. Eight thousand miles. miles on it. So true to form for many Vipers. It hadn't been driven much, but. The story behind why is actually uh, is actually a good one. It's a, a fun one. I found the car at a dealership called Texas Hot Rides outside of Dallas, and it was on consignment. Actually, okay. come to find out, by a seventy-year-old lady. Wow. Okay. Whose husband had passed away a few years prior, and she had started selling off his car collection to help her family out with higher education, help her friends out. Mm -hmm. Really a very selfless, very selfless lady. Yeah. And so when I called and asked about the car, I was told by the dealer, car's on consignment. Okay. And you're gonna have to speak with the owner okay. if you'd like to purchase it. So I remember hopping on the phone with, with this lady and talking to her for about an hour. Wow. They had 30 cars in a barn outside of Dallas. She told me her story and her husband's story with cars. 
they took delivery of this car new in Detroit in 2008. So they were the first owners. Okay. And what really blew my mind is that she had put most of the 8,000 miles on the car herself. Respect. This was this was her this was her car for the most part in terms of what she liked to drive. So we hit it off right away. Yeah. I flew to I flew to Dallas to to buy the car and. I was not expecting this, but she ended up picking me up from the airport in this car. In the car? We went back to her ranch, yeah. we did paperwork there, and then I drove the car 19 hours straight from Dallas back to LA, yeah. straight shot, and as I found out, the, the Viper seats are, are nice in the sense that they're soft. They are for squishy, pockets, yes. But the suspension on the ACR is not. So I ended up stopping at various gas stations until I found the right mix of stuffed animals ah. to create a lumbar support ah. for that 19 hour <laughs> drive. So that was my that was my inception story with yeah. the with the ACR with this car and and it's been a it's been a love story since. The car's just about to hit forty thousand yes. miles, so put about 32,000 miles on the car. She's seen 38 states, number of racetracks, and like anybody who's driven a Viper or owned one, I think the only way to describe these cars is they're just workhorses, man. It's a, it's a Clydesdale and it's a true testament to American engineering and, and what we can build here. Yeah. It may not have the, the Suede or the Alcantara, it may not have the it may not have the banshee scream of yeah. a Lamborghini V12, and, and we love we love everything. Yeah, man. Absolutely, you and I love all cars. Yes, American, Japanese, European. Yep. But when push comes to shove, there's something special about raw, uncut performance and connectivity with a machine like transportation. Yeah. Humans have had such a, an incredible relationship with transportation, whether it was. A chariot mm -hmm. that, that the Romans were riding on, whether it was an airplane that we've flown in, or, or whether it's been largely our cars. And yeah. This is this has been one of those one of the most special connections that I felt with a car for sure. And you drove her yesterday, yeah, man. It is, what uh, did you think? It is a proper driver's car. It is raw. Yep, turn right, Arcadia. It is raw, brutal, analog feeling in a way that modern cars cannot remotely try to capture. Right, like. By modern standards, an STO is pretty hardcore, yeah. but it still is so digital compared to something like this. That's right. This is, like you said, just a good old-fashioned formula of power from this massive engine, mm -hmm. mechanical grip, aero, fantastic manual transmission. I learned to like the clutch quite a lot, and yeah. it's so rewarding to get it right. Yeah. But you have to respect it. You have to respect it. Without, you warned me, right? I was careful. Down. We're on yeah. our triple eights, our yeah. compound tires, uh, on the streets, obviously, and no traction control. No yep. stability control. Yeah, the last of the the last of the pure vipers. Yes. Our, one of our other yeah. buddies, Jordan, low baller GTR, said recently that it was the last of the pure vipers, and he ended up picking up a he's got a Gen, Gen 4. Five. Oh, that's he, so he's he's got a Gen 5 ACR Extreme yes. in black, true to form for Jordan. Course. Only black cars allowed. <laughs> but he actually ended up picking up a Gen 4 ACR X oh. recently. So I believe it's one of 28 or one of 30. Okay. And his were stroked up to nine liters by some oh, maniac. Prefix? No, Run, or somebody else. I'm not sure who okay. did it, but it's running on leaded fuel, and the thing is a monster. So Jordan, oh. Jordan's out here in Arizona too. Yep. I've been meaning to been meaning to connect with him and go check that thing out. But oh, his garage yeah. is utterly amazing. Low Man. baller GTR. That's right. Have you All been, black you, cars. You've been over there, right? A couple times. A couple awesome. times. Yeah, awesome. I let him take the Z06 for a spin last time I had it out here. Yeah, you like that car a lot. Yeah. What made you pick Gen 4 over Gen 5? Was it because you wanted the last kind of hardcore? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I cross shot the cars together in 20, 2019, like okay. I mentioned, and I drove them back to back. I drove the I drove the Gen Five ACR Extreme, and I drove this car back to back in, in well, relatively back to back. The ACR Extreme was in LA where okay. I was living at the time, and then I had gotten to I'd gotten to drive one of these in LA, not this this exact car that I ended up buying, but I drove them within like a two week span, mm -hmm. and. At the time, these cars were in like 80s to low hundreds, depending on the miles. Oh wow! Okay. And the the ACR Extreme was, was like, 150 at the time. That's 160. Still a steal for one of those. Pre-COVID bump, yeah. right? Oh. And I I drove them within two weeks of each other. Two weeks of each other, relatively back to back, and there there was no doubt that the Gen Five is a, a more refined car from a from a, a creature Interior, comfort standpoint. Yeah. 
from an overall feel, from yeah. a fit and finish. Uh, it's a faster car, uh, albeit, albeit, you know, probably not, probably not that, uh, probably not by that big of a margin on on paper. I haven't looked at the car side by side. Maybe it is. It didn't feel. I think on the all, track, yeah, it's a bit more because of the just the more aggressive aero and sure, everything. And, sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's no doubt it's there's no doubt it's a faster car. Yeah, uh, in the seat on the street. Okay, and and just in in a little bit of in a little bit of like lifestyle driving. Yeah, if you can call that. Yeah, you can call it lifestyle <laughs> driving for the Viper. <laughs> you know, it, 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 there's no doubt it was faster. But I asked myself, I said, you know, when, when I close my eyes when I'm in the car, that's always in my test. When okay. I close my eyes, you know, I'll be it briefly. Not, not, okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll be it briefly. If I if you close your eyes for a few seconds and. And you rev match a downshift, or, yeah. you, or you heel toe, or you or you punch it for a second to, to hear the motor. What do you feel like? And when I when I did that back to back on the on the two cars, um, sure, I, you know the price difference. I'm sure had a little bit to do with it. You yeah. know, you know, 60, 80 k in price yeah. difference. But I said, which of these cars feels more feels more like me? Which okay. of these which of these cars do I connect to more? And and ultimately, it was the Gen Four. I'll you know, see. had I had I felt like the Gen Five. Gave me gave me what the Gen Four did. Yeah, I would have spent the extra money for it, yeah, yeah. and and I'd love to own one of the Gen Fives. Okay, uh, whether like a TA or an or an ACR Extreme yeah. at some point. Yeah, um, but the Gen the Gen Four ACR felt right, yeah. and I pulled the trigger, man. So yeah, forever no, car. You know, Honestly, it's it's a it's a forever car. It's, okay. it's always tough to say forever. It is very life very is, tough. Yeah. Life is fickle, and, and every day is a blessing, as we know. Yep. But as far as intention is yeah. concerned, with with how reliable this car has been, with everything I've thrown at it, and how easy they are to repair if yeah. things do break, I really can't see myself ever selling this thing. No I, issues. No. Almost forty thousand miles. Knock on for. Not, plastic, <laughs> not knock on plastic yes, that you can, that's all we have that inside. you can take apart with a hex key. Yeah, the, oh, that's the, true. The, the whole the whole interior comes apart with a with a hex bolt in this thing. True, true to form yeah. on the on the no the no creature comforts, no fit and finish. But it's a forever car, forever for, car. for sure. I'll rebuild her ten times over as long as I'm lucky enough to be able to do it. Yeah. And I've talked to I've talked to a few folks who are well into the into the mid hundred thousand. Yeah, so on I saw some listed hundred hundred and fifty thousand yeah. miles on yeah. on these Gen Four Vipers, and like we joke about it, but at the end of the day, it's a, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a pickup truck, and. There's there's some beautiful about these cars having been developed on a fifty million dollar budget yeah. in the early nineties where the the engineers at, at Dodge had to use parts that were cheap mm -hmm. and were tried and tested yeah. in other platforms and, yeah. and that's what they did. So it really has resulted in in cars that are able to achieve pretty incredible performance numbers with great reliability and example of that is I know it's more so for the Gen 5s, people twin turboing them mm -hmm. on stock internals. That's right. And they're running moderate levels of boost and it's all just so overbuilt and solid. Yeah. Yeah. So man. that's that's a good sign. But it yeah. has had a couple little niggles, right? You gave me I got such a nice little like rundown list on how to drive this car. It was so yeah. easy to hop in. Yeah. So we have a window regulator thing. We do, we okay. do. And and so where it matters, the Viper is Oh, it's perfectly where, bulletproof. Where, where right? it matters, the Viper's <laughs> yeah. bulletproof. But like any like any Dodge that's that's coming up on what is it, 16, 16 years yeah. old. Yeah, wow. You're gonna have you're gonna have some some funk going on here yeah. and there. So the, the little quirks we'll call them that that this car's got going yep. for it our passenger side window regulator has been going out for a while window works but you just you gotta, gotta stop it you just gotta stop it before she gets to the bottom yeah and then the the trunk latch on the rear the, oh, yeah. the electronic trunk latch is is malfunctioning yep. to the point where you got to open the you got to open the trunk manually if you're going to open the trunk but that's all well and good and then uh, the parking brake thing i never knew about that that's the thing you told me that's right the the parking brake is probably the the only actual mechanical quirk that you have to one of the few that you have to pay attention to on these gen fours yeah. when the parking brake is used on these cars the e-brake piston actually resets farther out <laughs> than not and so over time, the e-brake piston puts pressure on the e-brake pad. You end up frying through the e-brake pad. And then after you're done fly, frying through the e-brake pad, the piston starts to score the inside of the rotor. On the back side. On the back side. Oh. So once again, shout out to, to our buddy, Oil Brothers, Matt in Chicago. 
he and I did did some R and D a few years ago on what the heck what the heck was going on with the yeah. brakes on this car, and finally figured out that it was the the e brake the e brake piston that had scored the back of the rotor. So. No more e-brake usage in, in the Vipers. Everything gets left in gear. Parketing gear. And, 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 parketing gear, and, and she's all good to go. So. Which is a, a weird... Uh, you told me, so I would kept it very much in my mind. Never used a parking brake. But it's mm -hmm. weird, because you're used to that with a manual car. I you do, are. I put it in gear, and then parking brake up. Yep. And the yep. one thing I discovered was, if I wanted to like leave the car idling, you can't. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you got to turn her off. Turn her off. But yeah. I mean, what's more fun than a, oh. what's more what's more fun than an engine start button, yes. right? There's yes. oftentimes I'll I'll get in in this car, the, the Viper, or honestly anything with a with a push to start. Yeah, could, could be could be uh, a Lamborghini. Been lucky enough to drive a whole lot of cars. I know you have too, and mm -hmm. and some of our very good friends are great people. And, yep. And share their cars and pay them forward. And whenever there's a push to start, and this car is no exception. Sometimes I'll just close my eyes and I'll, I'll think of that scene from Gone in 60 Seconds <laughs> where they're getting ready to pull off the final the final push and, and they're all inside the garage and Nick Cage puts on low rider on puts on low rider on the on the cassette deck and just kind of vibes through it yeah. and then goes, All right, let's ride. Yeah. So it's it's always fun to, to push the start, especially like you said with those side pipes, because yes. you get that you oh. get that nice hit right off the bat. It's interesting because this era had a lot of them where you put you still have to put the key in, mm -hmm. you turn the ignition on, and then you press the button to start. But turning the engine off, you don't use the button; you just turn the key back off. That's right. And then That's release right. the lock to pull out. Yeah, yep. I think some Ferraris of the era had the same. Actually, even up to relatively modern Ferraris mm -hmm. uh, had that whole kind of setup. And also the side pipes. Oh, I had a Boss 302 Laguna Seca with the oh, side exhaust. Man. And I remember one of my favorite parts was going through a tunnel or like anytime there was a wall next to you, the sound reflecting off the mm -hmm. side. Such mm -hmm. a cool part of the experience. Yeah, no doubt you, about have it. Have you burned your legs before? I burned my legs. I burned my leg two times. Two, two times. times I did learn. <laughs> two times. Two times, both in shorts. Okay. And two times, both in shorts, and both in real tight parking garages. Oh, where, when you had, you know, not I, I was, I, it was, I would take the burn to avoid the door dang. Ah, so as, as worth any, it. I know you would too. Oh, if, absolutely. Uh, if, yeah. If you had to, I could so. buy new pants. I could regrow my skin like hair. That's 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 right. And and honestly, that I love the warning sticker. <laughs> right, the warning sticker is yeah. is too much fun. And a lot of people do talk about the heat in these cars. Yeah. And it's it's real. I mean, the the Gen Five they did a little bit better with the insulation. Yeah. The Gen Four, you do get some heat coming in from the from the side pipes and the transmission tunnel because that I noticed the shifter started getting a little warm when I was yeah, driving. These, yeah. These 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 cars are from the outside. They look very big. Yeah. Because you've you've got quite a long nose on the car and you're basically sitting over the rear axle. Yep. Which is how they get close to 50-50 weight distribution on on these Vipers. But the cabin itself is actually is actually pretty tight, pretty compact, yeah. Uh, and you know you're 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 a tall glass of water, as they <laughs> say. So uh, you know you, you very well could have been looking at the at the sun visor. If that's if, what know. I noticed, if I sat up straight, my line yeah. of sight is the top of the windshield. That's right. And ergonomics are a little funky with the wheel position and the pedal yeah. slightly off center yeah. and the shifter yeah. and everything. The pedal box is is pretty small, very too. small, and there's really no dead pedal. You have so to like tuck your foot under the clutch for the dead pedal. That's right. You yeah. got to tuck it behind the clutch so yep. I, I think it's it fits the narrative for what the Viper was always supposed to be yeah. when when it was conceived which Steve was Person. which was a, a modern which was a modern AC Cobra yeah in many oh, ways yeah. Carol Shelby was was on record a number of times talking about how the the vision for the Viper was to create a modern AC Cobra that could achieve incredible incredible performance numbers mm -hmm. in the hands of a very capable driver yeah and you know, I've I've gotten more comfortable with this car over time there's still so much this car can do oh yeah that I can't do oh, and, yeah. and there's something and there's something really cool about that where you're always learning with these cars and always pushing a little bit more and finding a little bit more grip and trusting the arrow a little bit more and it's a puzzle in that sense, and it's been a fun one. So, yeah. the we always say everybody, our buddy James, Stradman, of yeah. course, Alex Lambo, yeah. Jesus, Gordon, F Spot, yeah. everybody. We uh, don't doesn't matter who you are. Every, the consensus is clear that the 
the 2000s were the pinnacle of automobiles in many ways, where it was the precipice of the transition from analog to digital. Yeah. And during the during the 2000s, call it 2004 to 2014, maybe early 2010s, so many incredible cars were built, whether it was American, whether it was Japanese, mm -hmm. whether it was European, European yeah. it didn't matter because you had this perfect mix of the, we'll call it the end of the development curve for purely analog automobiles and a real onset of digital yep. in, in everything and in everything everything automobiles as well the road presence it got so much attention when i was driving it the color scheme helps the big wing helps and it just looks menacing on the road that's what vipers have always done the proportions right. the just aggression yeah yeah and yeah the gigantic i love seeing this in plates on the wing on the side view mirror absolutely that's so cool there's there's nothing there's nothing that makes you feel more like feel more like you're you're in Lightning McQueen, like, like I said earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of kids. It really does warm my heart, man. And I know that you've been you've been passionate about cars since day one, yeah. like like me and so yep. many of our friends. And we're so honored to be able to pay it forward. Yeah. When we yeah. get the chance, and and so there's nothing that warms my heart more than a kid walking up to this car, or or seeing it on the road and pointing at it and shouting Lightning McQueen. Yeah. Or, or looking at the car like they just want to experience it yeah. and letting kids sit in this thing, stand yep. on the seat, yeah. wrench the wheel with their yeah. hands like like we did when we were kids, man. And and it's the least we can do. So One of um, my first car memories, actually, there's a picture, like an ancient grainy little photo was me sitting in a uh, yellow Gen 4 Viper. No Convertible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you re you remember. Oh, yeah. You yeah. remember those those yeah. things as, as you get older and... If you're lucky enough, like we have been, to, to be able to own and enjoy these cars, and, oh, yeah. and have so many great friends who who are happy to happy to share them with us, it's yeah, it's a special thing, and I think that that's really what the Viper represents. Is <laughs> those kids liked it right there, and, and that's really what it represents, man. Is is you you can't you can't look at one of these cars, you can't drive one of these cars and and not smile. Yeah. Whether you're a person who eats, sleeps, and breathes cars. Or you're just someone who appreciates the the aesthetic of, of what cars are, or someone who doesn't know anything about cars at all. For whatever reason, the Viper draws people in, and there's something special about that. For I had sure. a massive grin on my face the entire time I was driving yesterday. I got check out the review, some dynamic testing, got it up to speed, and as soon as you get comfortable with the car, man, you just it was fun. Yeah. It was fun, yeah. but you gotta be careful because it will bite you. No, I, I no definitely. Doubt. I got a little judicious, judicious with the throttle at one point. Yeah. We got squirrely. I was like, "Oh boy, yeah. here we go." <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know, like the like, snake will bite. <laughs> like we, the snake will bite, and, yeah. and like we were saying, tremendous amounts of mechanical grip. Yeah. Tremendous amounts of aero grip in this car, but without the electronics, you really do need to mine those throttle inputs. Yeah. And as long as you trust, as long as you trust that grip, yep. and you trust that grip, and and. With the sticky tires, oh, it's, yeah. it's pretty it's pretty impressive what these things can achieve. They are uh, so insanely wide. We have two yeah. ninety fives up front, but eighteens. The yeah. smaller diameter wheels back then too, and the rears are two uh, three forty fives, nineteen right. inch wheels. Yeah, this this has been such a cool experience. Childhood poster car because I mean this came out when I was in middle school, 08. And I remember, yeah, the Viper was always just such a cool thing. I've also had an affinity for American cars, Corvettes, Vipers, mm -hmm. Mustangs. I think probably growing up in Detroit affected that. Yeah. Everybody looks at me, assumes I drive a BMW or something. <laughs> but no, I've had oh, Mustangs, man. I've had Shelby's, yeah. I've had a Corvette. Yeah. <laughs> Don't judge a book by its cover. No, no, yeah. it is. It is a special, unique experience that has not been. I don't think will ever be replicated in a modern era ever again. It's it's going to be tough, like yeah. like we said earlier. The, the 2000s were really the, the perfect blend of analog and digital in, in cars. Uh, and now that, we've, now that we've departed that era, uh, modern cars, sure, they're, they're great in so oh, many yeah. ways and, uh, and we love them too, but there's just something different about the way that an, an, analog, an analog car that's got, enough, that's got enough modern performance to really knock your socks off feels. And speaking of cool cars, I don't know if the cameras are picking it up, but look what's behind us. Holy crap. 
<laughs> that thing is decked out. That's right. With the and Japan plate and everything. Yeah, you got it. Wow, that's definitely a cool one. Now, the question is, is it a Pajero or a Pajero? A Pajero. A Pajero? Because... <laughs> You, you would think you would think a pajero with the with the Spanish pronunciation, yeah. but I really don't know. I gotta get a picture of this for my friend. My friend right. Michael's got one. He loves it. That is so cool. Wow. Got the stickers and everything. Love the car, man. Love the car. That's so cool. Final thoughts on what it's been like to own a Gen 4 Viper ACR. Final thoughts on yeah. the Gen 4 Viper ACR. A warm hug. Yeah. That'll bite you if you're not careful. Perfect. Perfect description. <laughs> Alright, let's do one pull. One baby pull. <laughs> uh, 8.4 liter V10 track special. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed chatting with Max about what it's like to own a Gen 4 a ACR. Max Bell 40 on Instagram. Yes, sir. Max Bell, 40, Max Bell 40 on Instagram. And there's only one more thing I want to plug. Eddie X, like Thank and you. subscribe. Appreciate like and subscribe. It. Support, Thank you guys. This, support this man. Thank you. Check out the full review. Did that. It was a ton of fun. Got a little exciting in the rain, but it was just a massive smile on my face the entire time. Thanks, Max. Thank you. Thanks for watching, guys.